Hi guys, Angelo here. I wanted to go over one of my basic workflows, uh, kind of take you through uh, a simple image uh, where it comes out of the camera as a RAW and uh, get it to where I'm ready to export it and send it off to whatever website. I've got a RAW image, nothing fancy, just a, a shot that I took at Narita. And um, essentially what I do first, I bring it into Lightroom 5 now and if I'm just doing a basic edit, one thing I'll do is right over here, I'll take the sharpening down to 0.5. It's normally defaulted at 1 for the pre-sharpening. I put it at 0.5. I leave uh, all this luminance, color, everything. I don't touch anything. And I check these two boxes. I enable profile corrections and chromatic aberration. If it's a basic edit and I'm not really doing much with the photo, that's all I do in Lightroom. And then I will control click, and when you hit control click on a Mac, it'll say edit in, and I send it off to Photoshop CS6. You gotta be shitting me. Okay, so we'll open it in Photoshop CS6 as soon as it gets open here. I can't stress this enough. The programs that I gravitate toward uh, that are all plugins for Lightroom and Photoshop is the NIC software collection, N-I-K. It's uh, really a fantastic deal. Uh, they used to be almost 700 bucks for the collection of the NIC uh, programs now it's down to 145 dollars give or take a few bucks but uh, these are the different programs you have Define 2, Viveza 2, HDR Effects Pro 2, Color Effects Pro, Silver Effects Pro 2, Sharpener Pro 3 they are collectively the best the, it's the best software I've ever used every single one of my photos is touched by one or multiple uh, NIC products Every single photo is going to have noise in it. I don't care where you take it. Why not let Define hunt the noise out and get rid of it so it's not an issue? In fact, a lot of my uh, photos get one, two, sometimes even three noise treatments as I go through the different steps of, of editing. Okay, this is a great example uh, of just how good Nick is. Now, I took this shot in the daylight. You'd think there's no noise, but sure enough, look under that wing. You can see the noise. If I put the uh, pin down here so you can actually see what we're looking. See the noise right here? It's just totally cleaned up right there. It's such a good program. Highly recommend it. Oftentimes, I'll just use the automatic profile. So it defaults. This is how it opens up for me. Major, automatic. I just let it apply the profile and hit OK. It's that easy. It'll save it as a new layer, and then I'll take it to the next step, which uh, for me, on a plain Jane shot like this, I'm going to correct white point and black point. How I do that is uh, I'll create a duplicate layer, and I'll work on that for now. And I am not a Photoshop master, so I'm sure a lot of you guys out there know a whole lot more than I do. But uh, I use it uh, specifically for some steps here and then and that's all I do I don't I don't really give it too much of a Photoshop uh, look but what we'll do is we're gonna go to a uh, threshold layer and then you right up here you're gonna grab this and take it all the way to the left until just a little bit of pixelation left right here you can see it and if I zoom in which you're gonna have to you can see what it is okay so that's basically the darkest of the darks so right up here, you get your eyedropper tool, color dropper, whatever it's called. Hold down shift, 
and put a point there. You can see the points labeled number one. Now come up here to your properties tab so that we can get our histogram back and slide to the right. And now you're going to need to zoom out again, see where we are. We're looking for the whitest of the whites. And let's just go with this, uh, this white layer on top of the fuselage. Hold down shift, click there, you've put point number two. Now what you can do is close this and delete this layer. You can see there's point one, or I'm sorry, point two, pardon me, point one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make a curves adjustment. And on the curves adjustment, we're going to take the dark spot and tell it what the darkest spot is. Where is the darkest spot? Right in the middle of the number one. Boom. Now, where is the lightest spot? Select this for the lightest spot and click the number two. What we do now is you have to hold down shift, touch or click onto this, hold down on the uh, shift click and drag it off the screen anywhere up here. Just get rid of that number two or it's going to show up on your photo. Then we're going to slide back down, do the same thing with the number one. Grab it, holding down shift, holding down the, your mouse button and drag it off the canvas. That's it. You now have a white point and a black point. Your curves is perfect. And you can see the difference. That's with it. That's without it. Looks much better. All right. Now, a lot of times with a plain Jane shot, I'm going to take it into Color Effects Pro. My favorite program of all. Hands down, you can do more with this program in a shorter amount of time than you can any other program. I can't, can't uh, stress it enough. If you don't have it in your arsenal, you need to get it. Uh, blue sky shots, what I'll typically do is I'll add a little bit of warmth. Um, it'll, whenever this opens, it defaults to whatever the last filter is that you used. So we'll just get rid of that. And you go over here to your filters list. You can see all these awesome filters. You can stack them one on top of each other. You can adjust the opacities of them. You can then save each individual collection of recipe uh, or collection of filters as a recipe. It's really really cool. So let's uh, let's add a little bit of brilliance and warmth, which is a really cool uh, a filter. There you can see just I'm showing you what it can do. Perceptual saturation, pretty neat. Can get carried away with this. So if you've got a blue sky shot. You can't do much with it. Otherwise, you're going to get edge haloing. We'll add just a touch of warmth to the shot. Not much. I'll add another filter. I like the detail extractor. That's a really cool filter. But again, you can get carried away with this. Uh, you can actually see there's on top of that fuselage, we're inducing a little bit of a halo because what it's doing is it's adding detail to the whole image. What's neat about this is we can put a control point on the blue sky and tell it not to add, and it's a minus control point, not to add wherever the circle is, these pixels will not be touched. So it should have taken care of that edge haloing, and it did. Gone. So we put a little bit of detail on the plane. Let's make sure we don't have any edge haloing on the gear. Looks pretty good. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to hit OK. And That'll be that. If I wanted to save this recipe, I could save it and name it, and it would live over here in the recipes folder. And then you could just stamp it on your next photo. It's pretty neat. All right, so now we've, we've got our layers saved back here. And we're going to get now to the meat and potatoes of probably the one thing that causes more rejected photos uh, in, in my time as a screener than anything, and that is sharpening. So many people get it wrong.
I was one of those people forever. I could not figure out how to sharpen an image to make it look like I wanted it to look. And finally, uh, through the help of a good friend of mine, we were able to come up with a fantastic sharpening method that is, uh, it just, it, the photo just pops. And the cool thing is, you won't get any jagged edges anywhere. Let's make another layer. We'll call this layer our sharpen layer. Grab your quick selection tool. Adjust your diameter so that you can see it. And select the airplane. Okay, now this takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to do this uh, real quick and uh, we'll come back when it's all selected. What we're going to do is we're going to go to select, modify, and expand. We're going to expand it five pixels. Okay. And what that did was, as I zoom in, it definitely gets you out into the... I want to make sure you get the whole plane. I do not want you to be dipping down into the white here. And that expanding of five pixels makes that happen. We're going to go to Layer, New, Layer via Copy. What we do is we go Image, Image Size. This is 5,206 pixels. We're going to take it down to 35, 3,000 to 3,500. Okay. I usually go to 3,000 if I'm just going to post on an air, uh, aircraft photo website. Um, obviously, if you're going to want to print this and you've got a great image, you don't need to downsize. Now we're going to zoom back in. Make sure down here that you're at 100% for this next step. It's critical. All right, we've downsized. We downsized. It almost looks like it was sharpened, but it hasn't even been sharpened yet. Here's where we're going to do our sharpening. We go to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. We're going to go to Lens Blur. And we're going to go to More Accurate. And now this is where there's a little bit of trial and error. And what I do is I, I start the default at 101 pixel, 100% one pixel. And I just kind of look it over. And I say to myself, is it really jagged or just a little jagged? I want it to be a little jagged. See this right here? See the registration's a little jagged? Usually all the edge lines will be a little jagged. Might be a little too jagged, so I'm going to take it to about 75%. Okay, that's a little bit more manageable. Still definitely sharpened, right? looks pretty good. And you can see that the wheels look really good. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to go ahead and OK. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our eraser tool and we're going to set our opacity to 70%. You can see the flow is at 100, opacity is at 70. That's a good width. You can see how big the circle is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace the edges of all the jagged letters. I'll start with the E. And you can see we're erasing the jaggies. But because we did this on a layer via copy, we're not erasing the plane. There you go. Have a look at that E compared to that N. The jagged edges are gone. The haloing is gone. If there is uh, an area like, see this white halo here, watch this. Definitely an improvement. If it's not enough on the, when it's just a blue sky shot, put your opacity at 100%. Just erase all the sharpening right there. Now it's gone. And a lot of times I'll do that uh, along the belly of the plane if it's a blue sky. You can see it looks much better. Just erase the sharpening on these edges. Okay, on the bottom. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set this to 70. First, I'm going to do the letters. Uh, that includes this JAL. When it's a real narrow uh, letter like this, sometimes I'll just erase the whole letter at 70%. I'll just go right over it. I'm only allowing 30% of the sharpening through, and it looks great. Usually these ones, same thing. You slide across, looks better. Uh, We'll come, I'm going to go ahead and do this, and we'll come back uh, to the video when I'm done. Next step, grab your sharpening tool. 
here's your settings mode normal strength 30 protect detail and now what we're going to do is everywhere there's a line we're going to run across it I'm going to trace the perimeter of the door sometimes depending on your shot if you go a little too far it gets jagged erase it and use the 70 percent rule take a look at how much better those windows look now trace this everywhere there's a line trace it I can see I actually forgot with my eraser tool I didn't do these these lines always get jagged these red uh, hazard lines I uh, forgot to do that so took care of that back to our sharpening tool and eh, I didn't really we'll trace there trace here I always trace the main gear strut put a little bit on the wheels right just pour a little bit more sharpness in there uh, when I was using my eraser tool always make sure you go in these flap track gaps uh, you'll get jagged edges in there usually on the uh, edge of the wing here you'll get them uh, let's go ahead and trace this door around here this fuselage fairing this door the cap for the rudder looks good and I'm just I'm gonna kind of speed this up so uh, you guys aren't bored but uh, okay looks good so now you can also I mean go across the passenger windows that'll make them pop a little bit make sure that you don't get jagged though it depends on uh, you know the start point of your image if it puts jagged edges on there don't do it or at least erase some of it it a hundred percent right here if you're not seeing jagged then there aren't any okay there we go and that looks pretty darn good to me so the final thing I'll do is I will do usually one more pass of Nick Define. And what I do is I do it on a, a whole nother layer. So I'll go Shift Option Command E, and that will merge all of what we just did into this new layer. And then I will take that merged layer and just call let's call it merge so we know what we're dealing with. I will go filter, Nick Collection, Define. And what I'm doing is I'm hunting for any noise. You can see some down in that lower fuselage as a result of the sharpening. And look at what Nick Define did. Totally got rid of it. My sharpening is still intact here. I'll put the uh, point there as you can see. There's the noise. Gone. Took all of our... Because, you know, you're going to get a little bit of uh, noise when you sharpen. Uh, so that's it. That's my final step. Hit OK. And we have got ourselves a winner. Okay, so from there what I do is I will now save this image back into Lightroom. So these are my presets for uh, sending it to the web for any of the aviation websites. I use a 1500 pixels across, resolution 150 pixels per inch, I resize, these are the JPEG, Adobe RGB, I limit the file size to 1500, and I do not apply any sharpening on the output, okay? because we've already done all our sharpening. I hit export and off it goes and it's now ready for upload. I like it. Hope this helps. If you have any more questions, see them, put a note on the uh, video here and I'll, I'll email you. I'll help you guys all I can. Have a good day.